Hi everybody, welcome to Poker Week. It's a very wet, blustery Poker Week, coming to you from the Emerald Isle. We're in the very heart of Ireland today. It's Dublin, a tremendously historic city, of course, Dublin. And I was lucky enough to bump into the very sweet Molly Malone. However, for the more traditionalist amongst us, Temple Bar is always the place to go. Why are we in Dublin this week? Well, it's simple. We're here for the latest leg on the APAC Tour. Tournament and final table report coming up later in the programme. As we delve into the APAT season, we bring you another session from the Fitzwilliam Club in Dublin. This popular event sold out in a matter of minutes to a full house of 150 runners. Players compete for a top prize of £3,000, a much sought after seat in the EPT, medal and trophy to boot. It's been a fantastic tournament, it's well organised, a bit unlucky, I went in there with Queen's young lassie with blonde hair, call me, she had aces, lost a lot of my chips, didn't the 1700, back to 4000, but you know me, I'll plod away until I try and get some help. Yeah, it's been a bit wild for me to the far, um, I've been as low as 1100 chips, I uh, managed to drain away my 10,000 chips, got down to 1100 and somehow I've crept back up to almost my starting stack again. Uh, I've been in with all in with some massive hands, Queen Seven, Jack Five, and they they keep winning. Uh, I think I've learnt the secret is always go in behind, never be ahead, and nothing can go wrong. About twenty one and a half thousand chips, uh, just keeping out of trouble really. So blinds are about to go up to six and twelve. So a few short stacks on the table. So it's going to be a bit of a roller coaster the next few hours. So fingers crossed, I still be in it in about four hours time. It's all right, some uh, average tech. Uh, doesn't mean anything either way, but uh, I'm still in, so uh, I'm hoping for the best and play my best. It's the first time I've actually entered anything like this, so um, quite exciting and quite nervous. And I think they're going to start calling me shaky soon. <laughs> now I understand you're playing in the tournament with your husband? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually doing better than him at the moment, so I'm quite happy about that. Hey, one for the girls. <laughs> it's uh, going pretty good. I'm uh, back down at 7 uh, 200, but okay. I've been up to 15, so uh, I'm still hanging in, hoping to do my best on my first live tournament. Is it really true that you've come all the way from Norway? Yeah, it's uh, it's true. Uh, it's combined vacation, long weekend for my wife and myself. And, uh, I like to see Dublin, have a Guinness, and yeah, play poker, obviously. Well, here to tell us just a little bit more about the APAT event is Media Director Richard Prue. Richard, tell us, how's it gone today and yesterday? It's gone very good. This is the fifth event of the first season. And again, we've been sold out and it's been an extremely popular event. Super. And uh, what's coming up in the, in the future for the APAT? Uh, we've got a couple more events through to the end of August, which we'll announce details on in the next couple of weeks. It looks like we've got a European event and perhaps one in, in Vegas as well. Fantastic. And uh, how do you feel that the APAT has been received by people in general? I think it's been very popular in the sense that it's broadened the market. We've got many, many of our players who have entered a casino or a live tournament environment for the first time through APAT. Um, so that's got to be good for, for broadening the market out for all the existing casino companies. Well, thanks to Rowena there, giving us a real taste of how eclectic the mix of people are that come along to one of the APAT championships. All points of the compass. Extraordinary. Wonderful. There was a Norwegian gentleman from Sweden. There was a coach load of Cornishmen. There was a card room manager from Edinburgh. There was a young lady that drove from Birmingham and then got the ferry. Uh, there was a gentleman who came in a wheelchair from Sussex. Not all the way in a wheelchair, like, but I mean, they just they have more fun than you do at the World Series. These guys know what it's about. It's about enjoyment, pride. It's almost a Corinthian thing. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And a real good point as well made by the young man, the Dutch guy, actually came over from uh, Galway. Almost a local, wasn't it, compared with some of them? A Dutch guy from Galway. That's right as well, yeah. It was. It was amazing, wasn't it? And uh, he was saying people, they don't come for the cash, or obviously it's nice to win a prize or two, but to be crown champion and go away with one of these medals. It's pure. These guys, uh, we've had five championships now. We've never had one ruling, one argument, any table banging, no hooting and hollering. It's how it should be. Great fun. And also the thing that I liked, and I experienced myself, was a nice round of applause when you get knocked out. Yes, I think, but yours was a special round because you was out very early. <laughs> uh, what can you do? Anyway, well done to everybody that's made the final tables, and we'll be giving you a final table report in part two of Poker Week.
Mark Edging can see just over my shoulder here. They've started the final table here in Dublin to see who will be crowned APAC Irish champion. Fantastic first prize, of course, £3,000 sterling. You get a seat into the EPT and, more importantly, to prove you were the champ, the medal. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Let's see what's going to happen. I I was going to play for first place and I had ace, back, I had ace queen and I raised, a guy re-raised, I pushed all in, he had eights, he called and I had a lot of outs on the flop, just didn't hit them so that's just poker really. I didn't see a lot of cards, to be honest, and I sort of hobbled my way to, to the final table. And that's just, I, just, I was expecting a rush that never came, but it's been great, you know, I've really enjoyed it. Fabulous tournament. Today, I started off really well and gathered a lot of chips early on. We came to the final table and it, the wheels kind of came off it a little bit, but after that, you know, you've got to look at it over. 20 hours of playing poker and it's just been it's been a great couple of days and I'm really pleased with how I played. Well, I'd raised the hand before and uh, Brendan had uh, come over the top of me all in. Um, I laid it down. Then I had exactly the same hand the next time. I did the same and I thought, well, if I, I knew I was behind. If I fold, I've just thrown 100,000 away. I'm going to take him on, take a chance, and it wasn't a bit. Brendan, one of the most fantastic performances I've ever seen on a final table. Brilliant play. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, when we were six left and I was down to 28,000 out of the 1.5 million, I really felt I just had to push your... And that was two big blinds, wasn't it? Yeah, two, two big, big blinds. blinds, and I just had to push your, or um, run away, and I, I pushed, and I pushed, and uh, it come back, I doubled up twice, and then, then I took um, took two people out, and it, it, I got up to um, chip leader, one, uh, uh, seven, over 700, 900,000 at one time, out of the 15, 1.5 million. Uh, but then, in the, you know, you know, the heads up went. Um, just didn't come right for me. You know, at the right at the, at the time, he was a great player. Um, you know, he, he played his cards well, and um, it just wasn't to be. Final hand. Did you sort of made up your mind you were going to push with the threes? Nah. Yes and no. It, it's not like you make up your mind beforehand. Uh, it's more like. Um, you, it's always finding out what the other one has, and by his response, you get to know more what he has. And um, if he had responded differently, I might have folded him. Because if I feel that he has like a good bigger pair, then I fold. But if I feel that he has uh, like a good ace, then I'll definitely call since I'm ahead. Um, and his actions showed me that he had a good ace. Uh, turned out to be king queen, but it's the same deal. I was ahead, and uh, chips go in. Well, it's now the end of a very long and tiring two days, and that's for those of us who just watched the fantastic tournament that resulted in, and what a top, top heads-up battle. Uh, one of the best I've ever seen. The final took five hours, and they battled. There was no messing around. As with all finals, there were some flat spots, but there were some high spots as well. They got their chips, and there was tremendous action hands right from start to end. Yeah, an absolutely fantastic two days. Hope we managed to bring you a flavour of how good poker in Dublin can be.